I'd like to welcome you to this self-defense demonstration and lecture that I'll be putting forth in celebration of Black History Month. So, enjoy this seminar that we're going to be putting on and feel free to ask questions. If someone wants to participate, let us know at any point in time. You can see the lovely and talented Rachel there with the camera. So, when we're talking about defensive tactics, self-awareness, self-protection, you have to understand one thing, that you are responsible for your personal protection. Personal protection is a personal responsibility. You can't depend on the police, you can't depend on anything else in the neighborhood. You know why? The police are there in minutes when seconds count. And there's a lot of things that you can do to safeguard and avoid these situations. First thing is I talk about the three A's. So if you're taking notes, now it's time to note, take notes. The three A's, awareness, avoidance, and action. So what you want to always do is be aware of who's in your area. You want to be aware of your escape routes. You want to be aware of your surroundings. You want to be aware of also people who could be considered allies to you. Know your area. Know those escape routes. You go into a restaurant, you go into a building, look around, look at the exits, look at the entrances. See if there's a fire extinguisher there because you also want to be cognizant of unconventional weapons that you may be able to use, like a garbage can, a chair, uh, a waste basket, anything along those lines. And you also may be carrying some unconventional weapons like an umbrella, a brush, a pen, a magazine, which we'll get into that later. So you want to be aware of your surroundings, be aware of who's in the area. The next thing, the next A is avoidance. 95% of situations can be avoided. Don't be there. Use your intellect. Just keep yourself out of dangerous situations. Again, if you avoid the situation and you're not there, it's tough for something bad to happen to you. You know, if you hear about these, maybe it's a party in a, in a rough area, uh, you know, like an after hours rave or something like that, maybe it's best to avoid that. So avoidance is key. The other thing is if you're shopping in a mall, know where you park your vehicle. All of the, um, the malls, they have, you know, G5, so forth. The, uh, the markers are posted. What you want to do when you go there is memorize where I park my vehicle. Also, try to be in a lit area. Again, avoidance and awareness. Avoid potential situations. Now, if you're shopping alone and you're laden with packages and bags and boxes and so forth, you are a target. You are a target. Don't let yourself be a target. Have a clerk walk you out, a sales associate. That's one of the things that, that they're actually mandated to do. They don't want you to get injured leaving their store. The next and last is action. What is action? You know, when you're talking about self-defense and self-protection, you know, most people think of the action part, you know, throwing a punch, a knee, a, a, you know, running, calling 911 or something, but hopefully you can avoid those situations by practicing the first two A's. Now that when you do an action though, it has to be concise and precise. And it has to be used on the uh, all or nothing principle. So what the all or nothing principle is, you either go fully in or you don't go at all. So you either go or you don't go. So you use full power on the technique. Don't leave anything to chance. And now we have the three F's. Yeah, I'm big on these uh, threes. So everything goes in terms of threes. So if you've taken any type of psychology, you know you'll have the flight or fight syndrome. So you talk about that, you know, as human beings, our uh, response to an attack is either we run or we fight. Unfortunately, too many people also fall prey to this one. 
It's called the freeze. So I focus on the three Fs. You're either gonna fight, you're gonna run away, but people freeze. Why do people freeze? Well, most people have never been hit by somebody else, especially in anger. So when they take that first shot or when they're first confronted, they're petrified and they freeze like a deer in the headlights. They don't know what to do. This is the advantage of training because if you train and you're used to that physical contact, it's not that big of a deal when you get attacked because you're used to it, you've been grabbed before. People have thrown kicks and punches at you. You've held focus mitts, you see things coming at you. You're used to it. But if you've never experienced that, you had a, a distinct disadvantage. And now, to avoid freezing, what happens is when you train, you develop a thing called IT. And that's not information technology. That's called instinctive technique. So you've built your own instincts because of your training. So you automatically respond. So you have no control over the situation because you respond the way you're trained. So that's why it's very important what type of training method you employ when you're working out. Because you have to do this on a regular basis so you don't have to think about it. If you have to think about the action, it's already too late. You're just gonna react. So, the other thing we have to talk about is mental preparation. You know, you're not going to ever actually reason with someone who wants to do something bad to you. These people do not think like you. They do, they do not want to be challenged. They just want to take what's yours. They want to impress their will upon you. They're the ones that want to remove something from you because they believe that it's theirs. You don't count to them. Imagine trying to uh, negotiate with an angry Rottweiler. It's not going to happen. You make one move, it's all over. So when you go into these situations, you have to have that mindset that you're not dealing with someone who thinks like you. You're dealing with a nefarious individual. So there's no negotiation, there's just action. And that's, again, where we come back to the all or nothing principle. So you have to do all or nothing. And that's the way we train too. And if you never ever come away with something from here, there's one thing I want you to, to bear in mind all the time. Never, and I say never, let someone take you from point A to point B. Never let them take you from point A to point B. Why? Because they want to do something to you that they can only get away with doing it at point B. Never go in a car. Never let them take you into another room. Your best opportunity of survival is to fight right then and there. That's your best opportunity. Again, never let someone take you from point A to point B. This also brings us to some other, other issues too. One thing you want to know is that you should be in condition. I can't stress anymore that being physically fit is going to help you with this because it's going to enable you to exercise your techniques. If you have strength and conditioning, you're gonna be less tired, and when you have to do a technique, you're gonna have the strength to pull it off. And you don't have to be six foot five, 250 pounds to have strength. I've trained many women and smaller people that you know, five foot two, 110 pounds, and you wouldn't wanna tangle with them because of the power they generate from the proper technique. And that's where your training comes in, into uh, play. So we're talking about training here. We want to talk about weapons that are easy to use. Now, I'm a trained fighter. I've been fighting for many, many decades. Had a lot of, a lot of wins, national champion in several different styles. I have, four, I have black belts in four different styles of the martial arts. I've been in combat arts for over 50 years, since I was a kid. So, for me, throwing a punch is very natural, right? My hands are conditioned. So, you know, if we're talking about like the six basic punches from Western boxing, I've got my one, two, three, four, five, six. But not everyone's hands are conditioned like mine. I hit a heavy bag, I condition my hands on bricks, hardwood floors, my knuckle push ups. Not everyone does that. But 
you can make an axe hand like this. Axe hand is a very formidable technique. So when I'm using my axe hand, I'm in my cross stance. My cross stance protects and I can see. Here it comes at a very unconventional angle toward the assailant. So when I'm here, fee, fee. side view here, fee, fee. that is a short axe hand. Now if we're going to do a long, long axe hand, you want to pretend like you're trying to cut through a row of watermelons. Here's my short stuns, my foot comes out, and my long comes here. So short, long. So if we're going to work a technique here, short, long. Notice what else I'm doing. I'm not standing still. I'm not standing still. Why? I want to put the opponent on their heels. I want them moving backwards. Well, when you're, when you're moving backwards, it's very difficult to generate power. So I want to upset their apple cart. I'm going to be moving forward the whole time. Another great technique is a palm heel strike or a chin jab. The palm heel is straight, the chin jab comes here. And the name comes from what it's doing. I'm jabbing to the chin, hitting right up here. And my body's in a good, solid position. So if I were in a situation, I wanted to throw a combination, I'd go one, two, three. Now, we're gonna add one more to it. We're gonna add a knee to it. So if I'm here, I go one, two, three, and then my knee comes up. So what I do is I pretend there's a large rubber band attached to my elbow and to my knee so that when I bring that up, the knee comes up. So imagine I'm faced with someone here and I want you to look at the distance I'm able to cover with this. One, two, three, three. Probably one off camera. So um, I'm covering a lot of distance so that if I have an assailant in front of me, they have to respond to this. Now the other good thing about moving when you're, when you're doing your counter offensive tactics is this. Someone may be lining me up. So I may be confronted by this guy. Maybe there's someone here coming this way. So if I'm standing here tussling with this person, this other person has a straight shot at me. I don't want to make myself an e easy target. I want to be able to move. So when I'm here and I'm starting my counter attack, the other person, maybe their partner, doesn't have a good shot at me because I'm moving the whole time. And if you notice how protected I am, I always want to keep my hands up here. One, two, three. <clears throat> now I can turn around. And again, I'm pushing them backwards. And sometimes it's a, it's a tough notion for people to understand and really adapt into their training is to be able to move forward the whole time. But it's something that's essential. So let's talk about some of the weapons of the body. If we're going up, I, um, one of the, the systems I have a black belt in is called Lethway, and it's from Burma. And it's the art of nine weapons. So if we're going up my body and we're talking about the weapons, one, two are my feet, three, four are my knees, five, six are my elbows, seven, eight are my hands, nine is my head. Now you say, always use your head in a fight. So when I'm using my head, I'm gonna come down and here, my neck is strong the whole time. This is not, this isn't gonna do anything. This is going to do something. So I'm using my whole body, just my head happens to be the delivery mechanism of the strike. Here. <clears throat> now if I'm going to my hands, you know we have our conventional boxing techniques, which we'll get into those a little bit more too. And then I have my elbows, which follow my hands, again for closer range. And then moving down farther, I have my knees. And of course, at the, at the end I have my feet. So that is the art of nine weapons. So my nine weapons are my feet, my knees, my elbows, my fists, and my head. And you want to employ these when, at the proper time. So if we're talking about a combination here, where I'm gonna shoot my elbow, maybe the guy is very, very close to me, so I have to know my distance. And that's another thing you have to consider too, is your distance. Because you look at it, you have different zones. You have your green zone, your yellow zone, 
and your red zone. So we have three zones, right? We have the three A's, the three F's, and the three zones. So everybody knows that green is go. Green is a good thing. Yellow is caution. Red is danger, it's a hot zone. So when I'm in this situation, and if I see somebody walking down the street, maybe walking toward me, they don't say anything, they don't make eye contact or anything like that, fine. Now, if they start to approach me, they come into my zone. I do not want to let anyone get into this zone. I don't want them to be here. No closer than arm's distance. I don't have the time to react. They're gonna to get, to to get to my body before I can do anything. So you don't permit them to get into this zone, this area here. Do not let them get arm's length. That's a good rule of thumb. So when we're doing that, I know this person is coming toward me. They say something. I have them keep at a distance because that's the green zone. Now they're going to the yellow zone. So now they walk toward me. My first thing I'm going to say, stop! Not you, it's okay. <laughs> first thing I'm going to do is say, stop. Now, that sends a verbal message to this person. I mean business. And the other thing, guys, look where I am. My hands are up. My hands are up. I'm in a fighting stance already. I'm ready to go. I'm prepared. So they start, they start moving towards me. They, they, take an, they make an overt action. I'm ready. So when I'm here, I yell, stop. Now, if they persist, guess what? It's on like Donkey Kong. I know they're coming toward me. I know it's on. So I'm going to pursue the action that I need to. I give the command, stop. If they come into my zone now, this is the yellow zone, they're, they're getting close to me. They ha still have to make an overt act to get to me. There has to be some type of action to get to my body. Now when they're in the red zone, it's already on. So when someone steps into your red zone in an aggressive fashion, they have made their intention known. That's the time to act. Especially if you've gone through this protocol and you've identified them, you stopped, and you've uh, told them what to do and they decide not to heed your warning. You know, so I also abide by another, um, another acronym, but it's actually five instead of three, so you might get right as cramp doing this one. Okay, it's called SIPDE, SIPDE, S-I-P-D-E. What does that mean? I scan. So whenever I'm somewhere, I scan the area. Okay, now, this also comes back to how do you carry yourself? There's a couple ways. Look, if I'm here and I'm, I'm like scared like this, running around, right? People are, gonna, people are going to say, oh God, you know, this is, a, uh, this is a victim. This is a victim you have here. So you don't want to portray that because you have to remember that you're dealing with a predatory animal when you're dealing with a, a criminal, especially with violent crimes. You're, you're dealing with a predatory animal. So they want the easiest prey. They don't want to be challenged because if they wanted to be challenged, guess what? They'd be in a boxing gym, martial arts school, running a marathon. They would be doing something challenging. They don't want to challenge. They just want to take from you what is yours because they believe that they have the right to do that. So you scan the area. As I'm scanning, I'm looking confident. So just here. In prison, they call it a thousand yard stare. So I'm not making direct eye contact with anyone. I'm just acknowledging that they're there, but I'm not letting them, you know, I'm not challenging them, but I'm not letting them know that they affect me. So I'm also not walking around like this, looking aggressive, like I'm looking for, looking for a fight or a challenge. I don't want to challenge anybody. I want to be left alone. So when you're walking, scanning, you scan the area, and now you're looking, this is also part of awareness, right? I'm looking who's in the area. I'm looking for my escape routes. I'm looking for uh, potential weapons that I could use if I need to. Then the identify, the I part. I identify a potential threat. I identify a potential threat. Whether, it, and this could even be while you're driving. You know, you, you, you identify a threat on the road. This isn't just to, uh, you know, a self-defense situation. This is to a, a survival. This is to survival mindset. So I identify potential threats. Next, 
I predict, I predict what may happen. And then I decide what I'm going to do. I make a decision. And then I execute. I'll give you a little story. And I'll, I'll go through the sifty on my story. A um, number of years ago, I was down in Philadelphia. Um, I was staying in a nice hotel, but the area around like wasn't so great. But I, got, I was starving. I was just hungry. And it was like 2 o'clock. And I wanted to find a diner. So 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm just starving. We got in there early, ate early, went, went to the baseball game, and I'm laying there, I'm exhausted, I'm, I'm hungry, I'm starving. So I walk out, and I walk a few blocks, find this diner, go there, have a nice meal, come back. I'm walking back, I'm making a corner, I see two guys, now there's, only, there's like no one on the street. I see two guys standing over there, and me. So they approach. I do not, do not let them get into my zone. So the first thing I do, they're from maybe about 15, 20 feet away. First thing I said, stop! That startled them a bit. And then they asked me to make a bar $20. I'm, you know, sometimes I have a little bit of a wise tongue. So I told them, do I look like a bank? Um, <laughs> and uh, so then, uh, you know, I told them in no uncertain terms to get out of my face and tell their story packing. And uh, told me to chill out. And I said, I'll chill out when you get out of my face. And they walked away. Now, had they taken, had either of them taken one step toward me, I knew exactly what I was going to do. But what did I portray? I portrayed an attitude and a demeanor that you may, you may want to move on to, to an easier prey. But you see what I just did, right? I scanned the area, I identified the threats, I predicted what they might do, I decided what I was going to do, and then I executed. And it all happens in a blink of an eye. Happens very, very quickly. That's why your training is important. So, just to recap on a couple of these things, we've got our three A's, awareness, avoidance, action. we got the three F's. Uh, Fight, flight, or freeze. We got our green, yellow, and red zones, and we have SIPTI. So let's talk about empowerment. There's people out there, maybe they're not so big, and they say, gosh, you know, okay, I know you're, you know, you're an ex-fighter, you're a bodyguard, you're a bouncer, all these things. Yeah, you can do it, but I can't. Well, I'll tell you what, you're not powerless. And I'll tell you why because you can generate a lot of power, and a smaller person needs to use the element of surprise. Rachel, can I use you? Okay, now, I'll tell you, Rachel has never, ever done this before. Matter of fact, I have so much confidence, I'm giving you two boards. Now, these are real, right? Not fake, not fake. Now, is there anything special about this magazine? Anyone see anything special about this magazine? Business tips. Business tips. It's got a good looking ball guy on the front. I like that. So, nothing, nothing special about this magazine, right? And she can attest has never done this before. So watch. Then I'm gonna tell you a cool story about this about one of my students. So what I want you to do, you're gonna step forward, same foot, same hand, and you're gonna smash right in the middle of these boards. No, you're, no, you're gonna hit them with this. You're gonna put this in your hand, hard as you can, bang, right through the middle, okay? Don't hit me. <laughs> right, step with the same foot and go, go ahead. Nice! You didn't think you could do that, did you? And she said, I didn't think I could do that. <laughs> okay, look, you can do it. And these are, this is real wood. I gave her two. I was so confident. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, great job. Now, tell you a little story about that. I was, um, I was one student, and he did a lot of traveling, and he was in, in a uh, bad area of, in India. And he didn't have any weapons. So he's on the plane. He grabs the magazine and leaves. And he goes, I remember what you taught, what you taught me. I remember what we did in training. And he went out to uh, dinner. 
and he was coming back to the hotel. Now, I mean, this hotel, just to let you know, it was, it was a bad area. They had barbed wire. They had guards with machine guns in the front of the hotel to protect the patrons. So the cab driver was taking him and his business partner back. Now, the business partners had a few drinks, but my buddy didn't. And they're coming back to the hotel, and the cab driver keeps going past the hotel. And he's like, wait, stop here, stop. And the guy's like, no, I'll drop you off here, right? So they drop him off, they get out of the car, and they're surrounded by six people. Six guys are surrounded him as they get out of the car. Now, the, older, the other guy with him was an older guy, and he was drunk. And, but what happened? My, my student had his magazine with him, had it rolled up. They approached him. The leader of the group came up to him. He took this, hit him right in the neck here, dropped him. That gave enough disruption for him to grab his partner and run to the gate in the hotel. Now, he hit him, that just dis disrupted the whole group. And they scattered, they didn't know what to do. So, very, very good tip. Here's another thing. I want to relay another story that happened. Uh, one of my students, she had actually trained with me for a good four years. Now, she was a, a beautiful girl, like 110 pounds at best. And she was going to American University. And she broke one of my rules and came back from studying alone. So it was like 12 o'clock at night. And she was approached by a large guy with a knife. She put him in a hospital. Put him in a hospital. When he was in the hospital, they tested him. His DNA, blood, uh, blood test showed that he was wanted in four rapes in the area. She was gonna be number five, but she wasn't because of her training. And she put this guy out and he had a knife. So let's talk about just different target areas, right? But remember, when you're in a street situation, you're not there to, uh, you know, try to prove who's a superior fighter. You're not, you're not there to try to, uh, you know, impress the crowd. You know, you're, you're, you're not doing a 10 round bout, because if you are, it's okay, I'll be your manager and we'll all make money. But you're there to get out. And remember that the goal of the perpetrator is to vanquish. The goal of the victim is to survive. You want to use the element of surprise and go for the vital and semi-vital target areas and then get out of there. Don't stick around, run. You know, very simply, you have most of your vital and semi-vital target areas are located on your center line. So you have the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the throat, the ears. Um, you have the solar plexus or xiphoid process. You have the bladder, the groin, the knees, and shins. This is where you want to direct your strikes. It's all or nothing. And you don't just try to hit them a little bit. I know I've said this before, but it's an all or nothing principle. You have to go full out on the technique in order to get this, the desired result. And remember, you want to get out of there as quickly as possible. Um, that's uh, pretty much it in a nutshell, guys. Thank you very much, and uh, have a great day.